Happy Sabbath, church family. Well, you grab your Bibles in hand. And while you're doing that, um, I just want to thank the church, your, your elders, your leaders. Um, and being a member of this church is, is truly special, right? Uh, I, I can see why people are coming and attending our Sabbath school and enjoying it every Sabbath. <laughs> um, but we have some amazing people, people who truly love the Lord, truly love the Lord. And I want to just give him all the praise for that. If you're visiting today, you're in the right place. Hallelujah. You're where God wants you to be, right here at the Garland Church. And if you're joining us online, the same for you as well. Uh, we want to welcome you and uh, so happy to have the opportunity to worship with you this amazing God that we serve. It's truly a good God. Uh, I see Sister Grace. And uh, I thank the Lord for you. All right. I, I truly thank the Lord for for the work he has been doing in your life. And we give him praise. The fact that you're here. Amen? Amen. And he has taken you through. You know, God is a good God, you know. You're never alone. Because God is always there with us. Amen? Amen. Always. Always, always. I see Sister Phyllis. I haven't seen you for a little bit. But we do know. Um, that you need our prayers and I want to assure you that your church family is keeping you in prayer. All right? All right. And Sister Hilton, please. When Sister Hilton is not here, we know, right? <laughs> we do know, but keep Sister Hilton in prayer, please, as she recovers. And of course, I want to just thank the outpouring of the church family on behalf of Sister Lily. Um, uh, can't wait to, to go visit her and see how the Lord is working with her. Amen. Keep her in prayer, please. Precious lady. Let's pray. Our Father, we find ourselves again as our custom is, um, right here in your temple. We are here because we acknowledge you as the creator of this world. Certainly you did not create this world to live in a life of sin, destruction, and death sickness but you have done all that you could do to provide the human family with a path to overcome sin by giving your only beloved son Jesus Christ as our sacrifice so all honor and all praise is due unto your name and that's why we're here. You have shown us how, how close you are. You have shown us how good you are. You have shown us how gracious you are. And you have shown us how you want to so much change us into the likeness of your son, Jesus Christ. It's quite a work. Because we do fail at times, but because of your grace, we're able to continue this journey of becoming more like you. And to continue this journey longing for the day and looking forward to the day when we shall spend eternity with you. We worship you today, Father, because we know that without you, we are nothing. Our sustenance come from you directly. You are our source. And so on this Sabbath, 
as we open your word, we're simply asking, Father, that you would speak to us. We're asking, Father, that you would, you would teach us in such a way that when we hear the words coming from your word, we would be inspired to do something about it. Every person here, including the preacher, is about to hear something from you, Almighty God. I give you all that I am as I stand here. Uh, I ask that you would just fill me with your words, that you would take full control of all my faculties. I willingly submit them over to you and ask, Lord, that you'll speak to me and that you'll speak through me to your people. May as we hear your words today, our desire is to be changed by them for your glory. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus that the church of the living God say, Amen. Amen. Blessed are the meek. When Jesus is speaking to the people who were right there before him, they were a diverse body of people. In fact, when we look at Matthew chapter 4, which is right before our, our text today in chapter 5, I'm going to invite you to turn there, Matthew chapter 5, and I want to focus on verse 5. Matthew chapter 5 and verse what? Five. five. The Bible tells us in chapter 4, the last verse there, 29, that he was speaking to people, yes, from Jerusalem, but people also from Decapolis. People all over Judah. I mean, he was speaking to people who were worshipers of all kinds of gods. He was speaking to people who were sick and who needed healing. He was speaking to people who were searching for God but didn't know him. He was speaking to people before him that day who had a need for a power outside of themselves to help them. People who have tried so many things and nothing was working. People who were struggling in their own families, with their husbands, with their wives, with their children. He was speaking to people from all over the Mediterranean area. And this was his first sermon. And as they sat there, and he was thinking about what to teach them, many of them probably would never hear his words again. So I would think Jesus would be considering the things that he thought that they would so much needed. Things that they needed the most. Wouldn't you say? Yes. And Jesus stood before the people. And said happy. All right. Blessed. Yes. Are those. Who are meek. Hmm, boy I tell you. I, I do have issues with Jesus elder. And the type of issues I have with him. I. I often say, why are you so profound? <laughs> because truth is, in my context and in your context, meek, being meek is not something that is actually elevated in our life. To me, when I think of someone who is meek, you know who I think of? I think of someone who is just quiet. And no one is really 
interested in, wouldn't you say? Someone who is mild, someone, someone who really don't gather the attention of others. Hmm. Meek. And those people are the blessed ones. In fact, Jesus even put it a step further and he says, those are the people who will, who will inherit the earth. Come on now. I want to inherit the earth, but I don't really know if I'm weak, meek enough to do it. Meek. I thought about this, this word, and I knew there must be something behind it because, because th there has to be some kind of weight behind that word. It's not just a simple word that people don't consider, but the mere fact that Jesus used it. There must be something behind it. And then come to learn from his own words. The only place that I can find, and if you do, you can always share with your pastor. I'm always willing to learn. But the only place I can find where Jesus actually described him himself, when he does that, he says, I am meek and lowly. Come on, y'all. When he's describing himself, himself, he says, I am meek. So there must be something behind this word. And I know we don't think about, when last have you thought about meek? Be honest with me. <laughs> right now, right? <laughs> Jesus is saying, I am meek and lowly in heart. So there's something here, no matter, it's a reason why he decided, I have, to, I have to leave this with these people. I have to share it with them right now in my first sermon. And so as usual, when I, when I come across a word like this, I would go and pull up the, diff, the different references in the Bible regarding this word in order to find or to describe for myself what does this word mean? Are you with me? And I would throw that out to you as well. If you come across a word in the Bible that, that really challenges your, your thought, just look it up. Go to a concordance. Read those texts and see if they, you can come up with something else. Are you with me? All right, so... There are three times in the entire New Testament you'll find this word for me. Only three times. The, one of them is our text today. Blessed are the meek. The other one you would find, and you can turn there with me. You can turn there with me to Matthew chapter 11. In fact, I think I, 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 I did give you a, a hint on this text. And I'm going to come back to this text at the end of the, uh, our time together here in the Word. But Matthew chapter 11. I want us to look at verse, let's see, verse 29. Are you there with me? It says, take my yoke upon you. And what? And learn from me. For I am. All right. You know, when it uses the word gentle there, um, to be honest, uh, the word used for gentle is a different word. So the, the, the best word to use here is the word for what? Because that's a gentleness is a completely different word. All right. It's talking about being meek here. He says, I am what? Meek and lowly in heart. And you will find what? So this is the second time you'll find this word. Meekness. I am meek and lowly in heart. You, the power behind this text is 
Who is speaking? Jesus is speaking. Who is he? He's God. Are you with me? This is, this is someone who was active in creating humanity. And this person who sits so high is saying that he is and he is low. Are you with me? He sits so powerfully and so intelligent. But yet still, he's meek and lowly. He has the capacity to do whatever he wants to do. But he's choosing not to. It's low. Just keep that in mind. That's, a, that's the best way I've learned to derive some kind of meaning from scripture when I want to. Are you with me? Just read the different texts. Regarding that word. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's look at the next one. First Peter 3. This is the third time you'll find this, this word in the Bible. First Peter 3. And uh, let me get to it here. First Peter chapter 3. And I want us to look at verse, well, let me see right here. Oh, I didn't write down that text, but I'll find it. <laughs> Let's look at verse 1. Come again? Yeah, but I want to read from verse 1. You're right. You got it right. You got it right. It's verse 4 is where you find the word, but I want to read from verse 1. To set the context. Wives, right? Now let me just say, before I continue, Peter just spent some time working over the husbands. Are you with me? He just spent some time working with them. And his main essence is that wives should what? I mean, sorry, husbands should love their wives, right? As Christ loved her, that's heavy. Any man here today have any aspirations of marriage? Don't ever touch marriage until you can really work through this text with Jesus. Are you with me? Love your wife as Christ loves her. Have you ever wondered how Christ loves the church? He gave his? Wow. That's why husbands, you know, the best way to really show love to your wife. And you're going to see it later. It's to be meek. Because you see, even in the animal kingdom, uh, the male is always the one, let's say, sitting high, right? But the best way to maintain his family is to we come into it we come into it it's, it's not by acting as the boss are you with me it's by showing love to that beautiful person that God has blessed you with in the good times but also in the bad times and to be consistent with that Women love that stuff. Silence, Elder. <laughs> Women love when their, their husbands treat them with love and tenderness. It will change a woman's heart. Your loud voice will end up nowhere. You will get back some of that. Come on, y'all. Boy. Elder, you're not going to join me? <laughs> but I've learned over 24 years of being married. 
to always say to my wife, I love you. Even when I'm hearing some things that I don't like, she'll tell you, I love you. <laughs> and I mean it. After working over the husbands, Peter says, wives. Likewise, be what? Submissive to your own husbands. That even if some do not obey the word, they without, without a word, come on y'all, be won by the conduct of their wives. You hearing that? So the husband is acting a fool. And the wife decides not to act as a fool. Are you with me? Is that, am I not reading Bible? Didn't the Bible say they without a word? Without a word be won by the conduct of their wives. You can change a person's life based upon how you act towards them. You can change it for the good or you can change it for the, for the bad. Just by how you relate to them. If you give them fire, be prepared to get back some more what? A fire ever quenched fire? Come on, y'all. Anybody have done that? Just let me know because anyway, that just doesn't work. But water can quench fire, right? Something totally different can do the job. Listen to Peter. When they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear, do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging the air, Wearing gold or putting on fine apparel. In other words, he's saying, do not just focus on how you look. He's talking to the ladies. He's not saying don't look good, good enough. Come on. He's not saying don't, 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 don't spend uh, 30, an hour, maybe two hours in the bathroom. Maybe, just don't make that keep you from coming to church early, all right? But he said, you can spend as much time you want fixing up your stuff. Do not let your adornment be merely outward. Arranging the ear, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. Rather, he said, let it be the what? In a person. He's going somewhere now. Fix up yourself and look, look smashing, look beautiful, all right? But guess what? He's trying to say, but there's something far more beautiful that's on the outside. As you, as you spend time with that, I wonder how much time do we spend with the inside? We spend so many times making sure people can see what we have, how we look. And nothing to do with the inside because that's hidden. And Peter is saying, listen, God is more interested with what is on the inside. He said, if you only spend half of the time you spend on the outside with the inside, maybe we can see some, some, some value. Because to me, what I'm looking at is really what's inside here. And Peter is saying, all right? Rather, let it be the hidden person of the what? Heart. With the incorruptible beauty of a what? Meek. Same word. And quiet spirit. Ooh. No wonder why Jesus said, man, I am going to attack this. Right where I need to with these people. They're focusing on all kinds of things on the outside. I'm after the heart. And when people see a heart like this, that will pull them to me. I want to see a heart filled with what? Meekness. 
It's one of the best things we could, you could have as a Christian. A life filled with meekness. With how you treat others. Who? Peter is saying, man, a beautiful lady, a true woman of beauty, is a woman on the inside that possess what? Meekness. You know, this is, I would love to spend some more time on this passage. But it really, it really shares with me what Jesus was after with the people. He wanted to see himself through them. He wanted them to know that Christianity is not about what you have. It's about who you have. It's about who is in the heart. It's not about just being baptized and being forgiven. It's about are you being transformed? Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Are, are we working on that? Are we working on the inner, inner man? Because that's what God is look, looking for. If all the quarrel and all the fight that we have been involved in, if that's our lifestyle, Jesus is saying, there's something wrong with the heart. You know, one of the best things about Jesus, you know, when I, when I read the word Elder Marlon, I'm looking at his life, and I'm always asking, I mean, why is he doing this? And I'm watching him through scripture, how he's treating people. And the only response I, I end up with is, Lord, I, I really can't do this. But guess what? Make me like that. <laughs> I want to be like you. Are you with me? I want to be like you. Seventh-day Adventist Christians should be people who are meek. I believe that's how we finish the work. People will be drawn to us because they're seeing Jesus and they want to know him. Are you with me? Meek people. All right, let me, let me jump from that. <laughs> but, but I want you to see also, I want you to see also the theme that I'm seeing when I'm trying to develop a meaning for this word meek. Wives. Yes. The hidden is not seen. It's not getting the attention. Are you with me? Yes. But the the outside is getting all the attention, right? And he's saying, listen, it's the inner part that's the beauty, correct? Amen. All right? Jesus being high, but he settled for the low, right? You have the outside which is being seen, but the inside is not being seen, but yet still the inside is the most powerful piece. So, so meekness is like having power over people. Having supreme control in your hands over people. But never using it to destroy them. But only using it to benefit them. It's, it's power under control. That's how I see it. Being high, but considering the low. Being meek. Let me, let, so now that we are able to look at, look at the meaning of the word, let, let, let me go now to some thoughts here. Some thoughts from, from uh, Sister White. I, you know, that's, that's, how I, that's how I do it, you know. I, I just love when I'm studying a topic, my elder, I drill down into the Bible. Are you with me? I, I'm not even going to leave that until I'm satisfied. <laughs> Are you with me? And then I'll scoot over to some commentary, all right? And when I did, listen to some of this. 
she made this statement that just, that just really impacted my, my, my heart. Far from being a disadvantage in life, which is what we think about meekness a lot of times. The meekness and loneliness, loneliness of Christ is the Christian's power. That's right. Any person who try to live a life so high and so prideful and so independent and apart from the people will never make a ounce of impact. Any person who say they are Christian and focus on what they have, all right, and that is their focus on what God can bless them with, the things that God can provide them with, if that's your focus, <laughs> no power. The power is all about you. Are you with me? But any time a person reach out to God and say, I want to be like Christ. I want that meekness in my life. Do you know what they're asking for? They're not asking for something for themselves. They're asking for something that can impact others. Meekness. And the only way Jesus was going to reach the world when it, through his first sermon, he's about to start something with, with some heathens, heathens before him. And he wants to now spread this, 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 this wait, 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 call when this viral message, so to speak, right? He wanted to spread it throughout the world. He knew he had to have some people who model his kind of lifestyle. And his kind of lifestyle looked nothing like the world. Zero. So we have a choice. We can say, what kind of Christian I want to be? A Christian who focuses on me and all my needs? And a Christian who just who has nothing to share? A Christian who sees himself as somehow independent from others? Jesus has nothing to do with that. He wants to win some people through you and through me. You know, you know, Winning people for the kingdom, it involves something that is hard for us to give up. Yeah. But the moment you try it, whew, that thing, I'm not even talking about money. I'm talking about time. Time. Our time is one of the most most sacred commodity right now, time. I mean, we are very careful with how we use our what? Time. And blessing someone consistently with our time, a lot of times, that's not a part of our time. <laughs> it's not a part of our thinking. Are you with me? But truthfully, what Jesus is seeing is, if I have some people that will model meekness consistently with their families, their friends, their co-worker, their church member, I can see, Jesus is saying, I can see where people will become contagious. They'll become contagious. Because any setting they're in, people will just love their presence. Are you with me? And they want to be connected with this person. And so goes the spiral. Till you find out that you, you live a life like that with someone. And their friends, grandmother, friend gets to know Jesus. And you have nothing to know about who that person is. Are you with me? And that just spirals. It all starts with how we interact with people and whether we have the fruit of the spirit of meekness. It's a very powerful thing. Let me, let me, let me, just, let me just bring it to a, a, a sweet spot here. Meekness, it, it, Sister White again, in the midst of murmuring, reproach, and provocation, constitute the brightest trait 
in his character, speaking of Jesus. When people were, uh, speaking of Moses, sorry. When, when you think of Moses, he's considered to be one of the meekest men, right? Very meek. But Moses was, was a man that loved the people and didn't see himself above the people, even though he was the one who led them through the what? The Red Sea. When, when, when his grand, when, his, um, when Jethro came to him and talked to him, Moses chose not to think about himself, but think about the needs of the people. Exactly what Jesus would, Jesus would have done. He wasn't thinking about power. He was thinking about people. To be meek is not to surrender our rights. But it is the preservation of self-control under provocation. Remember, you sit, Jesus sits high, but he what? He's acting in a lowly spirit. He has the power, all right, to really dismantle the provocation. But he's choosing not to. Same thing she's saying here. From scripture. Well, you know, he said, Blessed are the meek. Because what? They should inherit the earth. There's a reward for being meek, you know. There is. You remember when we think of meek, I said, sometimes we think of people who really don't have a future really don't, um, they, they, they don't possess leadership qualities, you know what I mean? They're just quiet and, and unassuming, right? But those are some of the best leaders. Those who are meek. Are you with me? They may not talk a lot, but that doesn't mean that they're not gifted and gifted well. So, um, said, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. What does that mean? Hmm. Yes, it's, it's a reward, correct? Yes. They will. Is it a now or a future? It will seems like what? Future, correct? Yes. But I want to say, I want to add something to that as well. But they shall or will inherit the? What does inherit mean? You don't have to break this text down here because, all right, I can see the characteristics. I can see the qualities of a mean person, a person who can manage um, power and, con and control it. Are you with me? And act in a way that benefit others. But inherit the earth. I have to look at that word inherit. What does that mean? Y'all know what in inheritance mean? Anyone? <laughs> you haven't gotten anything from a, a, a loved one who wrote you in their will? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. But, but, but the, the idea, you have to be a, a hearer before you can actually even think about inheritance, right? Because if you're not in the family line, if your name is not in the will, you ain't getting nothing. All right? So first, you got to be a child. Come on, y'all. You have to have some deep connection for you to inherit something, for you to get somebody's stuff. Right? And the Bible says we are hearers. Come on, y'all. Let, let's, read, let's read some of it. Let's read some of this. Um, uh, We can turn to, let's turn to Galatians 3. Galatians 3, 
Galatians 3. And I want to read verse, verse 29. And if ye be Christ, Galatians what? Verse. And if ye be what? Christ. Then ye are Abrams. So listen, the Jews today, Sister Wilburn, they're not only of Abram's seed. Are you with me? I am also. What they might think they have, I have it also. Are you with me? Because I am, I am, and the Bible is going to tell us who is a here. And here's according to the prompt. Let me read verse 28 real quick. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. Sorry. Verse 27. For as many as you have been baptized into Christ, you have put on Christ, right? So we are also hearers of the promises given to Abram. That's actually my promise too. I am actually Patrick. I'm actually in line to gain Abram's stuff. <laughs> Ella Stewart. I'm a wealthy guy, you know. Right? Because, listen, I have some land I just haven't claimed yet. <laughs> Are you with me? I just haven't claimed it yet. But the promise that he is referring to here is a promise beyond. Are you with me? There, there is a land, there is a new earth that I have a house already prepared. I have a, maybe a, 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 a 25 acres. Are you with me? Already lined out for me, already surveyed. It has some mango trees on it, some breadfruit trees. It's already laid out with some nice spring water. Are you with me? And my nice five bedroom house. Come on, y'all. I'm a here. <laughs> I mean, God is saying that the meek, all right, shall inherit some good stuff. That means if you're not meek, you lost everything. There's nothing for you. Acting in your home with meekness, with your family. It's, it's how Jesus wants us to act. Not quarreling all the time, not fighting all the time, but saying, forgive me, I was so I'm sorry. Amen. Whatever you want to say. But making it right. That's the stuff that Jesus look at. It's the things that people are not seeing. He knows the real heart. That's why Jesus said, listen, many people is going to run to me one day and they're going to say, Lord, look at what I've done. Look at all these amazing things that I've done. And Jesus has to say, listen, I don't know you. I don't know you. You know why he's saying that? He's saying that because when I'm trying to work with the inner man, you reject it. You're only focusing on what people can see. And the hard work of spending time with me, praying about that, that, that anger, praying about the things that can make a difference in your life, that when people come in contact with you, they'll know they're in contact with Jesus. Those things you're not paying attention to, and Jesus is saying, I want you to pay attention to these things. Because these things can not only affect you, but it can impact the very people you live with. You think I care Jesus is saying about all the money you have? You better make sure you're paying a good tithe and offering. If you're gonna if you're gonna live with all that money shown around. Say, I'm not looking at that. Are you like me? Are you giving me the chance to make you like me? Let me finish up. thought about some applications 
When we inherit something, one man says, we don't work for it. We only receive it as a what? Gift. How do we live a life of meekness? From day in and day out. How do we do it? Meekness is a gift that comes from God. You can't go to any employment, retreat, training center to become meek. There's no five, ten steps to become meek. Are you with me? All those leadership, meekness training, yeah, it's it not going to work. The way the Bible says a person access meekness is always remember that it comes from God. You and I can't generate it. It's a fruit of the spirit. Meekness. Do you want meekness? Do you want to be like Jesus? Who said he was weak? We go to him. We begin with God. And we say, God, I need you. I need you in my life because truth be told, I'm a loud person. I'm not a quiet person. I really need you in my life because I don't forgive people like you do. I really need you in my life because truly, I don't mind us living, living apart from people. But I know, Lord Jesus, that's not like you. So then you come in and help me to be meek. It begins with who? It begins with God. It begins with Jesus. And we have to let him in. Meekness also comes from what we know we will inherit. Let me, let me say it this way. Turn to Revelation 21. Uh, I'm going somewhere. It comes from God, but I do want to say it also ends with God. Are you with me? The fullness of meekness is seen on that day. In Revelation 21. Are you there with me? Yes. I am going to read verse... Verses 1 to 4. It's John says, now I saw a new what? And a new what? Now notice the word there, new. Sister Becky, it says new, right? That means, what's going to happen to this one? This is, this is going to be the old earth, right? <laughs> this is old. In fact, it's, it's really old. I mean, even with its oldness, it's so beautiful as well. Because it shows how intelligent God, God is. And how he designed this, this planet. But God is saying, listen, this, I'm going to burn it all up. So you're there, pla you're there planning to buy a six-bedroom house. And Jesus is on the way. Just, just, just. Rest assured in your heart that I'm only here for a while. Are you with me? Don't, don't get too attached because you're going to watch it burn one day. Are you with me? But when we see it burn on that day, we know, praise the Lord, something new is on its way. Are you with me? That's, you know, that's the hope that Christians have that's, that's piercing the heart of the atheist because they have nothing to look forward to after this world is gone, when they die. But Christians, because of our faith in Jesus Christ, we know that we live in the old earth and God is about to one day create a brand new earth. If you ever thought 
that this was all that there is about God? He says, eyes have not even seen. Now ears, Elder Marlon, not even heard, right? All the plans that he has in store for us. Listen, God has an amazing future for every person who placed their faith and trust in him. An amazing future. And he's saying, don't let the devil tempt you away from it. Don't let him carry you into a lifestyle of, of all the glitter and glamour. And you miss out on what I have in store for you. Secure it today. He says, he says, now I saw a new heavens and a new what? Earth for the first heaven and the first earth had what? Passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Oh, Lord, no more sea? Anybody know me? You know, Pastor Harris loved the, I love the sea. Ah, Lord, I wonder if we can talk to him. Elder Marlon, Elder Stuart, I wonder if we can. Elder Thomas, you think we can put in a word? You know, when I'm traveling, I'm coming back from Jamaica, you know what I'll do sometimes? This is my nose. So I'll, I'll go to the airport really early and check in our stuff, if we have stuff to check in, right? And then you know what I'll do? There's a beach, just about what? Maybe five, five, ten minutes walk, right? <laughs> and I'll just take my family to the beach. And we'll go there, the boys, myself, Nicole, and we'll just play and play and play. And we'll say, okay, one more hour. Let's get back to the airport. <laughs> and I'll do that all the time because I just love being in the water, right? Sometimes I'm floating and I'm just looking up at God and I'm saying, God, you love me. You truly love me. Just enjoying what he has created. He's a beautiful God. But he says, also, there was no more. Then I, John, saw the whole city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, prepared as a what? Bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice in heaven, behold, Tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be there, and God will wipe away every what? Tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. There shall be no more no more pain, right? For the former things have what? And you are telling me you don't want that? Come on, y'all. Everybody, we want that, right? We want, we're looking forward to the day when we can live in a planet without the pain that we experience. We are looking for the day when, like my aunt, we'll have her leg back together on our body. We're looking forward to the day when there'll be no more death. Amen. And the new earth, all of this that you just read from the Bible, is what the meek will inherit. Amen. This is Bible. This is coming from God himself. And this is saying, listen, it's so important to put your faith in Jesus Christ because the result of that faith and trust in God be this. Amen. Do you long for a day like that? Amen. Anybody? Elder Errol? And the last thing here, the last thing, I promise you. Is what we see in the life of Christ on the cross. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 to 8, Jesus being in the very nature of God, the splitting image of God, 
did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Are you with me? Philippians chapter what? 2 verse 6, right? Yes. Rather, remember I tell you high, low, you're powerful, you, you, you have authority and control, but you only use it to benefit others. Are you with me? This was the Jesus. He's, he's very God. But the Bible says he did not consider equality with God as something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of being a servant. Being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he did what? humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Even the death on the cross. Can you imagine God being lifted up before the people? The same person who was teaching them on that fateful day. He being lifted up before the people naked. spat on, treated with so much disrespect, and he had all the powers to wipe them from the face of the planet forever. He could call 12 legion of angels if he wanted, right there, and put an end to it. But he chose not to. He chose not to. What he, chose, what he chose to do instead was to say, Father, forgive them because they truly don't know what they have done. Let's pray. Father, right here in this sanctuary, folks watching online, our people, including the preacher, who sense their need for you. People who sense their inadequacies especially when it comes on to this quality of Jesus, this characteristic of our Savior. People who sense that it is completely impossible to, to consistently live such a life Outside and inside. And so that really opens up the path to some decisions that need to be made today. There are folks right here today, Father, you know them, who haven't made that, 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 that decision to have you and Jesus and the Holy Spirit as the God of their lives. Yes, they might be sitting on the fence and enjoying the world and, and then coming to church and I know you know that that lifestyle doesn't be any fruit for them and they know that too. For those people, Father, I just pray that you would somehow touch those hearts. May today be a difference. May today, 
folks who have not given their life over to you, may today be the day where they will welcome you into their hearts, even now. By simply asking you to come in and to bless them with your forgiveness and all from, from all the sins and shame that they have brought into their lives. Forgive them, Father, and give them a new start. For those, Father, who are here today who recognize that as they walk with you, they discover that there are some areas that they need to work on. There are some areas in which they've been taken for granted. And today, Father, you have shared with all of us how valuable meekness is to you. How valuable it is not only for us personally, but for us corporately. And so in the name of Jesus, I pray and I ask that you would just bless your people with the Holy Spirit. And help us each day to spend time together with you. Help us each day to put you as the source. Help us each day to also think of others and how you can be a blessing to them as well. Change our hearts, Father, and make us into the image of Christ who said he was weak, he was meek and lowly in heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.